Welcome. Good to see you. Happy New Year again. Love having fresh beginnings or something good about that. You know, if you're joining us online, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. Well, you should have the pastoral care update card. If you do you have that? OK, good. So if you already did that last last week, you don't have to do that. But we are asking you, if you would, to uh, to do that for us. Um, it is a uh, something we do once a year. Now you go. You might be thinking, "Hey, I'm not really a card filler outer type person." Well, uh, be that as it may, I'm asking if you would to uh, fill out a card for me. It, it, listen, it doesn't. It, we don't sell those to anybody. We we have a no hassle guarantee. You're not going to get a bunch of emails or anything. We actually need that information so that we can give you better pastoral care. You know, life has its ups and downs, some challenges, and we'd love to have accurate information on you. So if you would uh, honor me with giving me that information, I will guard it with, uh, with my life like a pit bull. Absolutely, that information goes to nobody else. It is for our sins. So as you leave, uh, you can just put it in the, uh, the, the box that's on the wall as, as you go out. Well, so that's something that uh, is really important to us as we begin the new year. We, here at Vineyard, we like to begin our years with prayer. We like to begin each year with prayer. So we are, we started it last week, 21 days of prayer and fasting. 21 days, that's three weeks. Now, you might be, this is your, if this is your first time or you didn't come for some reason last week, uh, you say, oh, I missed that. No, you didn't. For you, it's 14 days of prayer and fasting. <laughs> Love to have you come along and pray and fast. Don't miss what God wants to do in your life, that blessing. We don't get all legalistic about it anyway. Uh, but it's just a time when you fast. In other words, you put something of the world aside. And then you have focused time of prayer. What you need to know is when you start putting God first in your life and you have focused time in prayer, miracles happen. God does some amazing things. And some of you, frankly, you need to see God's hand at work in your life. You need to hear God's voice. It's been too long since you've heard God spoke, speak to you, since he's revealed something significant that you knew was for you. And so God, that's his passion. It's not like he's holding on to that and good luck getting it from my grasp. No, God, the Bible says God liberally gives to us, but we need to posture ourselves so that we can receive what God has for us. So that's why we do that during 21 days or 14 days of prayer and fasting, we have corporate prayer where we come together Saturday mornings. If you can come, we'd love to have you right here at 9 in the morning for this coming Saturday, then one last one the following Saturday, where we just do New Testament prayer. We have a couple worship songs. We do some prayer. We have a prayer guide if this is new for you. We show you how to, how to, how to pray. And then we close it out with some corporate prayer where we just all agree together as somebody leads us in prayer. It's an incredible time and would love to have you come and be part of that. Well, we're beginning today a new series, a new series that it's called It's Time. And I, 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 as I was praying about this last year, I was praying, God, what do you want us to do as we launch our new, you know, the new year? I mean, it's been a tough couple years for us. And I do believe this is going to be a new chapter for our church and the influence we're going to have and what God's going to do in our own spiritual journeys. And we get to journey as a church. It's not a solo do. There's a solo part of it, but it's not just a solo deal. There is a journey that we're part of. And in fact, we see it in Scripture all the way, all, almost all the books in the Bible, all the way from Exodus all the way through the New Testament, where over and over we see this journey that, uh, that we are on. It begins with knowing God. Knowing God is not just God is my, uh, you know, as a religion 
or even God as the church because you can, you, listen, having, believing in God, hey, there's something to be said about that, right? There's a lot of secularism going around and atheism. And so if you believe in God, that's like a feather in your cap. But you know, it's interesting. The Bible says that even the devil believes in God. So believing is not your end goal. If that's where you're at, I believe that's not a, that God has more for you. He wants you to know him. The word know means that there's, he's personally relatable to you. You connect with him. He's a friend. And when that happens, it moves us on to finding freedom. God is always about helping us discover the best version of ourselves. We all have a version. Is it the best version? Uh, we're on a pathway towards that. And the only way you can get there is by dealing with some of the issues that keep you from being the best version of yourself. And so we have small groups to help with that. In fact, we have part of our small groups is we have some that are finding freedom. They actually help you. If you've never done uh, a finding freedom small group, that's what we encourage you to do. In just a few weeks, we're going to have our semester launch. And if we encourage you to be part of a small group and get involved in a freedom group. But that always leads, once God clears out some of the stuff that's keeping you from being the best version of yourself, it's discovering who is that, discovering my purpose. And you have a purpose. If you're here today, you're breathing, which is everybody, you're alive, you have a purpose, and it's not, he's not done with you. Regardless of what your parents might have said about you, they might have said, oh, you were an accident. Yeah, we weren't even, you know, we, you know, we were trying not to have you. <laughs> you know, we were, or all the kinds of things that parents come up with, you know. Nowadays, we have COVID babies, right? You're a COVID baby, you know. But uh, God knew, the Bible says God knew you years and years before your parents were even born. That before the foundations of the world, he thought about you. He planned you. You see, if you buy into what the world says about you, that you're an accident, or what your parents say about you if, it's not, if it doesn't point to the Lord, then we end up going through life feeling like our life really doesn't matter. And so if, if I wasn't born, it wouldn't matter. If I, if, if I exited today, nobody would miss me. And I am telling you, that is a lie. That is not true. God has a reason for you, and he has a purpose for you. And so not to try to just fill that emptiness. There is a gnawing emptiness if we're not fulfilling our purpose. But not just to try to fill it with anything. There's a lot of things, a lot of substitutes. But the real thing is discovering this is what I was made for. And that really leads us to why the church even exists. It's to help us to make a difference. We're to make a difference in the world. And the world is in a sorry place today. There's all kinds of divisions, all kinds of polarization. I mean, there's... there's all kinds of uncivility, and, and all, it's a mess. The church, every time I read, which is every day, <laughs> every time I read or listen to the news, uh, it just reminds me we're not done because the world's going to try to create different laws and different things, and there's nothing wrong with that, but what the, the root issue is the spiritual condition of people. God wants to transform us and help us to step into the life he has for us and when we start to do that, it changes everything. And so that's the, the big idea here today. The big idea is you have a next step. You have a next step. I have a next step. Each one of us, we're all on this, so we're, we're somewhere on this continuum. And each of us has a next step of moving forward. The problem is we often don't take our next step. We get stuck. And we need some kind of catalyst. We need something to kind of help us to get, get, get unstuck, right? Get, get moving. Sometimes, have you ever been behind somebody in a car? And, you know, like, you know, the traffic around here is pretty tough. And, you're, and the lights, you know, they're designed so that a certain amount of traffic can get through, right? And if you're, if you're like me now, I've got problems driving. I, I'm, I'm barely a Christian driving, you know. So, but I'm, I'm, I'm confessing my sins to you, you know. But one, and another problem I have is, is that I'm always in a hurry, even when I'm not in a hurry. I'm driving and I'm like, I'm counting, you know, okay, if these all people, if they go at a certain rate, I'll get through this light, you know. And, 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 and then and there, invariably somebody's there, they, they miss their cue, right? And then I'm looking, you know, kind of looking in their car and, 
their arms are up, they're texting or something, right? Or they're doing something on their phone. Thinking, so what are we supposed to do? Honk or honk? Right? But what we're supposed to do is do a friendly honk. Like we're friends. And I'm just going to give you a kind reminder. Beep, beep, right? Just beep, beep. That's what we're, but what I want to do, beep, you know. I wish I had a horn that like blew out their windows and all, you know, like beep. Beep, beep. You remember that? Just kind of a beep, beep. Well, that's what I want for you in this series. As we talk about it's time, I'm going to come alongside, not the screaming beep, but just a beep, beep. Now, in my mind, what I'm thinking of, don't miss this. This is too important. Get on what God has for your life. So inside, I'm thinking, beep, but I'm not going to do that. It's just going to be beep, 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 you know, and hopefully this will be part of the catalyst that will help you to see the light is green. It's time to move forward. Now, Jesus had to give some people beep, beeps. I mean, sometimes they just got distracted with all kinds of things. And so he would come along and he'd go, beep, beep. Here's an example of it. On the road, someone asked if he could go along. I'll go with you wherever, he said. Here's Jesus' response. And this time, he, it wasn't a beep, beep. It's a beep, right? It's curt. Are you ready to rough it? We're not staying in the best ends, you know. Now, this is the message, so obviously it's a paraphrase. But it's the idea saying that, hey, Walking out your faith with Christ, there's some tough parts to it. If it was easy, there's some things you would already be doing. But your next step is probably not easy. That's why you're not taking your next step. So he's saying, hey, you, you need to recognize it. it there's going to be some rough things. It's not always easy. That's why we need one another to encourage one another. And that's why you need to realize it's time. This is my moment. Jesus said to another, follow me. He said, certainly, but first excuse me for a couple of days, please. I have to make arrangements for my father's funeral. That seems like a good excuse. We're, we're like masters at good excuses, aren't we? We always we come up with the best excuses. We're like proud of ourselves. Like, that is a good excuse. Of course, that's why I'm not doing what I should be doing. You know, that's the reason. But here's what Jesus he refused. He says, first things first, your business is life, not death. And life is urgent. Announce God's kingdom. So he redirects him. He says, hey, first things first, making sure that you're not neglecting one thing in order to do something else. Then another said, I'm ready to follow you, master, but first excuse me while I get things straightened out at home. Jesus said, no procrastination, no backward looking. You can't put God's kingdom off until tomorrow. Seize the day. What's Jesus doing? Beep, beep, right? Beep, beep. Go seize the day. There is a brand new opportunity set before each one of us. This is your moment. It's time. You know, New Year's Eve, just a few weeks ago, most of us heard or maybe even participated in that song, Auld Lang Sang, right? It's the, and it, you may not know uh, the, the lyrics or thought about it. Sometimes we're so tipsy when we sing the song, we think, what, what in the world, you know? But if you actually take a moment and look at that, the, the, it, actually that word, Auld Lang Sing, means days gone by. And it's an encouragement, a challenge of there's some things in the previous year or years that that shouldn't go forward. You need to let that go. Should old acquaintances be forgotten? Some of the people you're relating to in your life, they're not helpful in your spiritual journey. They're pulling you back. They're holding you back. And, and, and so it's, it's taking a moment. So I asked some of our worship team to come, and, and they're going to sing that song for us. I want you to dial into the lyrics, because hopefully you're not tipsy now, right? And then we'll talk about it and unpack it.
on all the years gone by. How I love, how I long when I cry. Memories in my heart, I will carry with the scars as my light for my journey. What should stay in 2021? Are there some relationships that need to, you know, be there and stay there? Hurts, pains, fear, all kinds of things. We're on this journey together, but if you carry stuff along with you, you can't make the journey. You can't make the journey that God has for you. What should stay in 2021? Well, first of all, I think we have old histories that hang on to us. You know, I I love that feature in a computer that you can clear history. You know what I'm saying? Where you go up and it says clear all history and you just wipe out all of those files in that one folder uh, and it just clears out room for more stuff. And just hit that button. It'll usually warn you, right? Are you sure you want to do this? For some of us, when we're ready to clear the history, there's... There's a warning that comes up, but it's not always God's warning. Sometimes it's Satan. You know, are you sure? You let them off the hook. They're getting away with what they did to you. That's not God's voice. And so clearing the history, divorces, the bankruptcies, the betrayals, all kinds of things that they just try to sabotage our spiritual journey. And unfortunately, sometimes we let these these things that have happened to us, our histories, define who we are. We start to see our life as, well, that's who I am. I'm a reject. That's who I am. I'm a failure. I can't really do that. I have these, you know, all of these reasons why I can't do it. And we have this lens that we start to view life through. Here's what the Bible says. It says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Easier said than done. But God's saying that because he says, I want to help you with that. I want to come alongside you. I am doing a new thing. Now, it springs up. Do not. Do you not perceive it? Now, I highlighted that because I think that's, that's part of my job is to help you to see it. So a lot of times we're not doing what we need to be doing because we, it's not even on our radar. We're juggling so much stuff, just trying to make it through. 
and whatever crisis is in front of us. But God says, I want you to pause and take a moment so that you can see, you can perceive what I have for you. I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So our history, letting have some old history that's defining me, and I don't want that to happen. Also, old habits. Habits, you know, behaviors that we have that are, that are not helpful. You know, and, you know, we end up with habits. So many of them started, we didn't start out thinking, oh, I, I need a new habit. You know, a new habit that's, gonna, that's gonna, not going to be helpful. That's going to drain my finances and cause all these problems in my life, suck my health away. No, we started out just small, small incremental things. And then next thing you know, we look at it and we go, oh, that's a habit. And that's not helpful. We could even call them addictions. But, you know, the world is filled with stuff. Some of our lives are just filled with so much, you know, the phone. And, I mean, the phone's like, you know, becoming all-encompassing for so many people. You know, because we have everything on there, right? You can do everything on your, on your phone. That's why we're doing 21 days of prayer and fasting. We're taking some things that... It's got its grip a little too strong in our life, and we're setting it aside. Why do we fast? Is it to try to, to, to you know, self-flagellate ourselves so that God will listen to us? No, that's bad theology. We do it. We remove some of the world so we can more focus on what God has for us, our lives. Some of us are fasting um, meals. I know some people that are fasting lunch for 21 days. Some people are fasting all day and then eating at night. Some people are having maybe a, a type of fast within food, like uh, caffeine or sugar. That's what I'm doing. I'm fasting sugar, which I love. I have a sweet tooth. I love, you know, sugar things. And, and then I also love meat. Now, I've never fasted meat before, so that's kind of like new for me. When I told my family I was fasting meat, they, like, freaked out because I'm like, I make most carnivores look like vegetarians. I mean, I'm just like a meat guy, you know, so... Uh, but I'm fasting it. Does it mean I'll go beyond it? Probably not. I love meat. But, but for 21 days. But it's hard because I'm the only one in my own fasting meat. And so this past week, you know, a couple of them are, I don't want to name names, but a couple of them are, they're cooking some delicious, it, it, it's red meat. You know what I mean? It's like steaks or something. I try not to look, but I can smell it. The aroma is like, I can't even concentrate. I'm trying to work on this message. And... Uh, which, if, if you don't like today's message, it's because of that. I couldn't even, I couldn't even focus. On, uh, I'm thinking, oh, no, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm wrestling. All of a sudden, I get a text out of the blue. And somebody says, hey, I, I ordered Chipotle and accidentally put your address in. It should be there in five minutes. You know, help yourself. And I'm thinking my first thought was, oh, well, it's probably got meat, right? Comes no meat. Just, it's a veggie Chipotle. So I just devoured that. Just like, just I'm shoveling it in. Tasted so good. Way better than it probably actually tasted. But because of where I was in my mind, you know, with like, you know, feeling like, oh no, you know, I'm, not, I'm, I'm melting. You know, I'm not doing well. Or, uh, so delicious. But, you know, God provides for us. You know, when we put him first he, and we're separating ourselves from the world. Here's what fasting, a great description of fasting says, is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke to set the oppressed free and to break every yoke. Fasting is about breaking free things that they have this yoke. They've got to strangle. They've got too much of the presence in our lives. And it's really keeping us from experiencing what God has for us. So not only history habits, but also old hurts. When we have wounds uh, and, and we have pain that seems to not go away, scars, tears, all those things. They, I mean, they just, and part of it, you know, grieving is part of the way God uses that part in our life to bring healing, emotional healing. But there's also a part of that, you know, we all have shared, we all have pain in our, in our, in our lives, hurts. Part of that is letting God use our pain. You know, for some of you, what's holding you back from being healed and moving forward with old hurts is you've never let God use those hurts. As long as we hide our hurts, God will never waste a pain. God will never waste a hurt. And when you start to see how God uses your personal hurt, your own, the tragedies, the painful moments, and he starts to use it in a redemptive way 
to bring hope to others, to bring healing to others, it starts to transform that experience. You start to look at that differently. And so God is calling some of you to, do, to, to use the pain in your past to bring healing and hope to other people. It's part of, what you're, part, part of what you need to do. But the truth is, when I look back at some of the mistakes I've made and some of the pain, I wish I could get a do-over. Oh, I would have made that decision. I wouldn't have made that decision. But we don't get those opportunities. And so it is a matter of moving forward. But in Christ's power, here's the promise. He says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, so if you ask Christ into your life, you say, God, I invite your presence, your power into my life. The new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. What does reconcile mean? It means that the balance goes to zero. We all have a balance. We have a balance of sins that we've committed to God and to others. We have a balance that other people have inflicted things on us. But the balance, when you reconcile before God, is it all, you just kind of give it all to God. God is going to mete out justice. God is going to oversee me. He's going to watch over me. His future for me is good. And we step into that. That's why I love that song we sang just recently, The Blessing, where God, God is for you. He's for you. I love how we sing that refrain over and over. I think it takes that long to sink in. You know, the first couple of times, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what are we singing again? He's for me. God, let God clean you once and for all. Here's what I'm trying to say. I can't start the next chapter of my life if I keep rereading the last one. Keep rereading it, rehearsing it. What do I do? I need to step forward and make four changes in my journey. Number one, it's time to get closer to God. You, the truth is, you... you each of us, from time to time, we need a beep beep. The light is green. You might need something bigger than a beep beep. You might need beep. But you, hey, it's time. Don't keep rereading the past. Move forward. God has something for you. And there is a, per, there's a part we play. He says, come close to God. That's an invitation. What happens if we do that? Well, that's the premise. The promise is, then God will come close to you. You come close to God in 21 days in prayer and fasting. You come close to God by getting involved in, in, the, in, in the family of God and the mission that God's given us, the corporate mission that we all play. We can't do it individually. We do it together. Wash your hands. So there's the external things that we have to, you know, we're fasting food and all like that, but there's also the, the heart issues. So God's working on both, the external things, the things inside of us, purifying us, and then it's all about having loyalty for God, not having it divided. Because our tendency is, you know, we have the world and then we have God. Now, back in, the, you know, years ago, 2,000 years ago, when the, new, the, the, the uh, early church just started, the new community of Christ, well, there was a, a, a heresy that tried to come in called Gnosticism, which said the world was evil. So, that, so anything of the world you set aside, that's part of the reason why you had monasticism and all the monks and trying to separate themselves from the world. The world is evil. But that's not sound theology because who created the world? It's God. And God declared it is good. He made all those things in the world, the universe, the animals, the sun, the moon, all of it. It's good. He declared it good. Jesus actually came among us. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, and in the incarnation, it declared, this is good. So it's not like it's evil, per se. It's like, yeah, God did create that, and it's good. But when we get our, when we get our loyalties divided, that becomes a problem. Now it's not good anymore, not good for you. And so part of what we do when we're pursuing God, pressing in, is we're saying, God, my loyalty is to you. Now, we all get off base sometimes. We kind of veer off. That's why we keep coming back. We need one another. We encourage one another. If you want something you've never had, you've got to do something you've never done. Some of you, you need to do these new, some new steps in your life. It is time. 
You need to get off from where you're at and make this the year saying, okay, no more procrastination. This is what we looked at last week. Number two, it's time to get really honest with a friend. You know, we wear masks. We talk about that. And the way to take your mask down is, is to f- create relationships and friendships where it's safe and where you can do that. That's why we talk about small groups as a place where you can find accountability, you can find a partner to walk with you. But the, here's the thing with relationships is you have to be intentional about them. And, and that's more so as you get older. When you're young, it seems to not be, you know, you can, you know, kids can be friends with almost anybody. But as you get older, the more intentional you have to be, okay, I need some people that will be mentors for me and help me take that next step. They're further along, and I need them to help me. I need people all around me that are in the same stuff, going through the same things. We do it together. I need intercessors in my life. You have to be intentional about building those structures, those relationships, which is why we do small groups. Here at Vineyard, we're not just a church and here's some small groups. No, we're a church of small groups. We believe that's where life change happens, and we need that. We need that. So our small group launch is just in a few weeks where you can be part of a small group. We do semesters so that we have breaks. But this is your, this, we, we don't just put this on, you know, for, you know, to kind of make you feel bad and, you know, we, you know, somebody's looking at your calendar. Oh, well, you have empty time. Let's fill it up. No, these are things we need. And for some of you, you need to be teaching. You've been, you're ready. In fact, God's been speaking to you and When I'm talking about it, you're going, yeah, that might be me. And God's stirring that and has been. And that's not by accident. The reason why, for some of you, you're thinking right now, as I'm talking about being a small group leader, it's my fault. I've been praying for that. So you can blame me. Where'd that feeling come from? Well, Andy's praying. Dang. You know? And I got other people praying, too. But we're praying God raise up people who have the desire to lead. We'll train you. We just need desire. We just need somebody who's available. All you need is to be able to smile and to be able to serve a cup of coffee. Boom. You got that? We got the rest. And we'll, we'll train you. We train, we're training people right now. We train uh, small group leaders all throughout January. During the f- so if, if obviously you're here, so if you miss the 930 service next week, if this is your service, if you come at 930, we'll train you. Easy to get involved. We'd love to have you come. Look at what the Bible says. I love this verse. It says, confess your sins to each other. Now, normally we think, you know, confessing to God. And there's value in that. But he says the healing happens and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Some of you, you're stuck because you've never really shared what you're going through. Maybe you did it years ago, but you're currently going through stuff. You know, it's shocking to me. Unfortunately, I've done a number of funerals for suicide. And it's shocking to me how often people say, I have no idea what that person, you know, how they must have been horribly depressed or going through. Nobody knew, even family members. We are so good at wearing masks. Let's be honest about that. We're good at hiding our, our, our depression and our loneliness and our emotional pain and all those things. Listen, God says, if you want to be healed, you're, it's not a solo deal. You need to be part of other people. That's where healing is found. So I, I want your 2022 to be better. How's that going to happen? Well, if you want to go fast, you go alone. But if you want to go far, you go with somebody else. And news alert, our walk with Christ is a marathon. Well, maybe not for, I don't know, maybe some of you, uh, you know, are going to die tomorrow. I don't know. I hope not, right? I tried that joke last time. It didn't go over. So <laughs> I should have scrubbed it then, you know. I certainly hope you don't die. But, you know, the truth is none of us know the day, how many days we have, right? But between now and when you face God face to face, and each one of us will make no doubt, including myself. And he'll look back at, you know, oh, God, I didn't know. You know, you might be a Christ follower, but, you know, there's a whole, there's rewards that are tied to how we lived our life. And we go, oh, God, I didn't know. And he'll point back. Oh, no, remember that? You, were, you, were, you heard about what I expected of you at this moment. So that's why we, it's not meant to make you feel bad. It's meant to live your life with the end in mind. Knowing, if you know there's a test coming, the smart person prepares for it. 
You know, hey, I, I'm a, there's a day of accountability between me and God. And so also living your best le- life today, living out your life is about getting on board with what God has for your life. Third, getting in tune with my purpose and my passion. God has a purpose for you. You have a real purpose. Now, often people, they are trying to fulfill that gnawing, that inward thing with other things, but it's only discovering what, how God really wired you that makes the difference. If anyone thinks they're something when they are not, they deceive themselves. So there's a lot of people that are in deception. They're trying to live out a purpose that's not theirs. And he says each one should test their own actions. In other words, take the time to really investigate. Then they can take pride. It's a good kind of pride in them, themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. We don't look at other people because if you look at somebody, if you look at other people, some people you're going to think, oh, they're doing better than me. And then you'll feel bad. You'll get discouraged. Other people, you think, oh, I'm doing better than them. And then you get filled with pride. Either way, you're dead in the water. That's not God's best for you. So you have a race that you're supposed to run. And you do, and we do it together. That's why prayer, fasting, growth track. We're talking about discovering how God made you. We want to partner with you right after this service. We have lunch waiting for you or watch your kids. We want to just take, and if you'll just give me an hour of your time, four times. It's just one month long. And you can start today, even though it's step two. There's, we just, we're doing step two currently right now, and some people, a number of the people, were that was their first step. Because you can step in at any time. Step, but you say, hey, I am going, it's time. It's time. Beep, beep, the light's green. I'm going to just figure out what I'm supposed to be doing. And then planning on when a small group comes. We also, if you're married, I want you to listen to this. This is important. If you're married, we, we believe that marriages are under attack. Satan does not want you to be uh, in a good, healthy marriage. And so we are going to start an annual marriage conference, and we're going to do it next month because that's kind of the, you know, Valentine season, this, you know, as this, you know, new things start to bud. And, and, uh, and now this is not the easy route. The, the easy route is to do nothing to invest into your marriage. That's the easy route. Now, that doesn't lead to good places. But, we're, you know, sometimes you have to do something that you haven't done before. Maybe you've never done that before. I encur- you can register for this today. It's right on our website. You can go on to vineyardchurch.com. It's right up there. Re- and I want you to do that. It's time. I want to see you in there. You don't want to go through life. You want to grow through life. So you, you do have two options. You can just go through life living life and filling it with things and going from crisis to crisis, or you can grow. But again, that takes intentionality. Saying, I'm going to be in a small group. I'm going to go through growth track. I'm going to, I'm going to be part of the prayer and fasting that's going on. I'm going to be in the marriage conference if you're, if you're married and you get involved. Step two, as I said, is a vital part of that in, in, in discovering your purpose. All right, and then lastly, it's time to get on doing something greater than myself. God has a purpose that's bigger than yourself. So many people, they live their life just trying to reduce their discomfort. They're just trying to, they're trying to overcome one problem after another, but life is not just trying to solve problems. It's living for a purpose that's bigger than your problem. That's why you can be in the middle of the most difficult situation and, you're, and you still have joy in your life. Because it's not about other things. It's about what God's doing. When you know you're living out God's purpose for your life and you're making a difference, when you're on this God adventure, God gives you a strength. He stirs up joy in your life. There's a hope that only, that, that only we know about. Because we know God's in charge of our life. Here's what the Bible says. God creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does. It's not easy, it's work. That's why I highlighted that. The good work he has gotten ready for us to do. Work we had better be doing. God created work. It's not the easy route, but it's something he wants us to do, that we get going. Stop looking in the rearview mirror. 2022, it's time. The light is green. I can't go back and change the beginning, but I can start where I am and change the ending. That's a word for you. 
you can change your end, regardless of where you are today, regardless of where you've been, where, where your feet are headed is what's so important. It is time. BB, it's time. This is your moment. It really begins with a declaration where you just decide, enough's enough, I'm moving forward. And then you give that to God. So let's do that as we close our service. Would you bow your heads, close your eyes, let's pray for just a moment now. The, don't, don't worry about the person next to you. Just This is between you and God right now. You and God. Would you, God, begin the healing process? I know some of you are, I, I, I had no intention on diminishing the pain you're in. All I'm saying is, is that God has a plan that will include your pain and that it doesn't have to hold you back. So I just want to pray God's blessing over you. God, begin the healing process. Help each one here, whether they're listening online or they're here in the physical service, to step out from the things of their past and start to experience the best version of themselves. Give us power and grace. Let the days of this past that that the song was about those things some of those things don't they're going to just hinder us God you're doing something new now as we go into 2022 I need to let you know that if you've never put Christ into your life if you've never asked Christ into your life or you know you're far from him somehow you're maybe you were close years ago but today far from God and I'm inviting you today it's time this is your moment now fast follow Christ put him first place in your life I'm going to ask you to declare that in a prayer that I lead you in right now if that's you I think that God's wanting boldness it goes along with it's time I'm not going to stay where I'm at anymore I'm not going to ask you to come forward stand up. This isn't about joining your church. It's about you saying, Andy, I need that in my life. I want Christ in my life. I want his power. I want his presence. And this is my moment. If that's you, then right now I just want you just to put your hand up. Say, I want to lead. I want to, I'm going to follow you in that prayer. Would you do that? Say, include me. Yep. Bless you. I see that. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Say, this is my moment. I don't want to miss it. whisper however you want to pray you just pray these words say dear God today I put you first in my life thank you for your grace and your forgiveness help me to put the things of the past in the past and not let those define who I am today would you say God today I want to seize the day Give me the strength to follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Would you congratulate those who who said that prayer? And Some of you didn't raise your hands, but you said that prayer, and, you know, I'm glad that you did. Uh, There is a next step for you. Your next step, if you haven't taken growth track, is to go into growth track right now, right after service. I'll see you in there. I teach part of it, and, and uh, we, we want to journey with you in your spiritual journey with the Lord. Also, if you'd like to financially give towards what we're doing here at Vineyard, to uh, you, you, that's, you uh, agree to the vision, you say, that's my vision, that's what I want. I want to see people to know God and find freedom, to discover purpose, to make a difference. Then that's a way that you can, you can participate. There's other ways, but that's one way where you can financially give towards, uh, towards what we're doing here at Vineyard. We'd love to have your support there. If you would, stand with me. We're going to close with the final song, but I want to just pray a blessing over each one of you. Father, thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your kindness. Lord, you have the ability to wash us clean. Lord, I pray that you wash every mind clean. Give them a fresh start. Lord, I pray that 2022 is a new beginning. 
we'll look back and say, this was the moment. This was it. God, do something great in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen.